General Kilpatrick, when our men move into South Carolina, it will be one of the most horrible campaigns in the history of the world. The devil himself could not restrain our men in that state. Okay, sir. So the orders you established earlier in the campaign concerning the treatment of the locals, they're no longer in force? If you meet resistance, the town is leveled. Resistance is positively inconsequential at this point. They must realize that. I think they do, sir. When my men are out foraging, usually what they find is uh, empty houses. The women and children go into the forest, and then after they've gone, they come back. You have my permission to burn any unoccupied structure you suspect is harboring the enemy. Of course, I'm concerned about women and children who go in the woods whose homes are burned because they're unoccupied and have no place to go. Well, this is war, sir. And in war, terrible things happen. And if enough terrible things happen, then these folks down here won't ever do this again, will they? So, I need you to move your troops toward Augusta. But I thought we weren't moving on Augusta. We are. The final target is Columbia. You will be a diversion. But right now, my most lethal foe is Wheeler. If you can manage to pull him off my left flank, I would very much appreciate that. Well, if we can prevent Wheeler from consolidating all the rebel elements of cavalry around Columbia, the city would be ours. Precisely. Okay, sir, what do we do? A few old bridges to cross the swamps. Resistance should be light. Yes, sir. Lieutenant McCann, take A Company, assault the bridge. Lieutenant Halsey, take B Company, provide covering fire. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Company, shoulder arms. Here they come. not going to hold. They're going to get across. Yes, they will, Lieutenant. I'll let General Butler know. Traitorous friend, fire. 
Thank you for seeing me, Mrs. Winberry. I understand that South Carolina still harbors some mistrust of Northern institutions. That's not very surprising under the circumstances. Please understand that this travesty of reconstruction has left a good many open-minded people not very open-minded. So what were your thoughts when you learned that a journalist from the Philadelphia Inquirer wanted to do a human interest story on the effects of the war on its 10th anniversary? My first concern was the intentions of the effort. It's very popular to portray Southerners as backwater river rats existing on grits and squirrel meat. Well, I've had grits, but I haven't found any squirrel meat. Please understand, I am not here to rehash politics or perpetuate stereotypes. With my piece, I want to focus on the very real, very personal experiences of the war. Stories that will resonate with people everywhere. Well, that is why I consented to the interview. I hoped that a lady journalist would bring a more human perspective. Our fellow citizens don't really want to hear what's been endured. They will be reading about you in a few months. Now, you were in Atlanta for most of the war. What were the circumstances regarding your departure? People talk about the burning of Atlanta as if it were some singular, catastrophic event. That was just the finale. You see, in the fall of 1864, we were surrounded by war. We knew what was coming. Residents were leaving in droves daily, taking all of their possessions. Most of them were going either south or east. But they were being replaced by thousands of injured soldiers coming in every day on the trains. I understand you were a nurse for a time. Well, yes, but please understand, Every able-bodied woman was a nurse sometime. There were never enough doctors or nurses, and there were so many people that were in dire need of medical attention. And when did you decide to leave? My home was completely destroyed, and there was no one there to help me rebuild it. So that's when I became a refugee. My goal was to ultimately get to Fayetteville and hopefully find some of my family there. Did you make it to Fayetteville? Why, yes but in a roundabout way. I was told that it was safer for a woman traveling alone to go further south, but it really wasn't. I arrived in South Carolina and was accosted by highwaymen. The hero of the ordeal was a captain in the cavalry by the name of Blake Winberry. He chased the men away and then made certain that I arrived in Columbia safely. Very chivalrous, rescuing a damsel in distress. He sounds quite dashing. Yes. He was. He asked me to marry him two days later. So suddenly? He had just ended a relationship that wasn't good for him. And I felt myself drawn to him immediately. It was lovely, really. Romance in the midst of war. Married? That's right, in a couple days. So soon? I want to do it before my troop has moved downstate. This is sudden. It's unheard of. Hardly proper. People are going to talk. Under other circumstances, we would have had a courtship and an engagement, all the niceties. But we didn't have time for that. You wanted to grasp your happiness while you could. Indeed. It was magic for 24 hours. And then Blake had to return to the battlefield. And then the city of Columbia, South Carolina, fell to the Yankees. So when did you open the restaurant, Mr. Lightfoot? About a year ago, right after I got back to Columbia. Has it been doing well? Fair. 
these things take a little while to build up, you know? So why a thing like this? Something I always wanted to do, I guess. Did you have a business when you were in Kansas? No, yeah, never seemed like the town or place. So what exactly did you do there? I reckon you say I was security. Security? For whom? Well, I was a hired gun. Look, when I left Columbia, I was a wanted man. I had to take work where I could find it. Wanted by whom? When I left Texas before the war, I was a wanted man. That kind of thing doesn't go away just because they fight a war. And then, by the United States government for being a spy. And were you a spy? Well, I was a scout. Sometimes as a scout, you put on the other color coat to get information. So yeah, yeah, I was a spy. You can talk about all that now. You are quite fortunate that they started those amnesty programs. Years too late for me, but I guess that's life. Too late for what? There's no bounty on you anymore. No. It was too late to find Lexi. I'd like to know more about Lexi. How did you meet her? Well, she was the sister of a captain in my unit, Blake Winberry. And he was a good friend, a good soldier, but please, Miss Whitfield, can we talk about something else? I understand. Let's get back to the war itself. Okay. What are your most vivid memories about the last battles at the end of the war? Well, remember right before Columbia fell, the swamps. Think about swamps, you think about heat and humidity. Not that year. That year it was cold. Remember sometimes in the morning I'd ride through the federal camps? Some of the men had fallen out. They climbed up in the trees to get away from the cold water. Hypothermia got them. And poor guys that did survive, they had to go right into the battle. That was Broxton Bridge. Shoot till I say, and aim low. Over here. In the trees. Choose your target, let me know when. Ready to go. Got it. I'm ready. That's him. I'm ready. Got one, Captain.
now. I don't mean to alarm anyone, but I think we're getting surrounded. I am wasting my time. <laughs> it doesn't take everything. Come on out, sugar. Oh. Don't you speak American, wench? Get out of that closet. your baby, as long as I get what I need. What's this, Harry? This trash and her brat. Get out of here. We won't hurt you. I've been noticing you, Harry. Whenever there's a chance of fighting, you seem to disappear. Where'd you steal the jewelry? From what I hear, abandoned structures, anything in it's fair game. Fair game. This wasn't exactly deserted now, was it? With that trash and her brat. She don't own the place. She don't count. Get out of here. You can go to hell. I wish you'd try it. I'd wish you'd try it. You're worthless. I hope the ribs cut your throat. Watch your back, bastard. Next chance I get to plug you, I'm damn sure gonna take it. You know this is only gonna stop him for a while. Yep. How far are we from Columbia? Ten miles, give or take.
Columbia was heartbreaking. We knew that every bridge into the city had been burned. We knew that there were major battles where the Federals were pushed back, but the, the blue coats just kept advancing. And you lacked access to a reliable news source. Exactly. It was all just hearsay. I waited absolutely as long as I could to before I had to evacuate. I kept telling myself, if you just wait five more minutes, Blake will show up. He will be here, I told myself. But I suppose being a refugee was my lot at the time. The wolves were at the gate. I had to go. Peabody. The flames on the horizon. They're massive. Magnificent. Yes, sir. The entire warehouse district is burning. Columbia may in fact cease to exist tonight. It's truly an historic event. This is how the history books will remember us, Peabody. Of that, I am sure. Well, it appears we've burnt about every bridge in the state by now. Doesn't seem very productive. Here, see if that fits. Captain, you look good enough to hang. It seems to fit, but what's this about? We're taking a tour through the lines. Columbia? Yep. When do we leave? First light. General Butler puts a lot of stock in that you know the town. We got papers signed by Kilpatrick putting you in a Union Kentucky regiment. But know this, we don't surrender. If this thing goes bad, we fight our way out. If we die, we die, period. So what can you tell me about Blake Woodenberry? He was a good friend, a hell of a soldier. But espionage, he never really got comfortable with it. Are you comfortable talking about Lexi now? Sure. Two days after Columbia fell, me and Blake threw on blue coats and headed back in. You know, his father was a hell of a doctor. He went to school in Philadelphia, in fact. I like him already. <laughs> He was busy patching up Federals. He didn't have much of a choice, mind you. What me and Blake were doing was incredibly dangerous. But all I could think about was, Lexi might be there. Wrong. This is 
just wrong. Lexi, it's me. You're back. Thank God. You all right? Where are they? Mom and Papa? They're around somewhere. Not even the Yankees could keep me away. After the dim of the battle roar, just at the close of day, wounded and bleeding upon the field to die in soldiers' way. One held a ringlet of thin gray hair, one held a lock of brown, bidding each other. Wearing that uniform, you, you could be executed as a spy. They gotta catch me first. God forbid. What made you come through the lines like that? To take inventory? We can save time and paper. We're just counting what's still standing. I'm going with you. I'll go saddle lightning. <sighs> At least we have a roof over our heads temporarily. I'm afraid most of the Yankees behaved quite badly. Disappointing. Take me away, Hunter. Let me go with you this time. Nah. It'll be tough getting through the lines as it is. Your brother will never let you go. I'll be stuck in this burned out town forever if you men have your way. Lexi, if you knew what it was like out there, you'd take this burned out town. The line's no place for a woman. Everybody's always telling me where my place is. I have a room to myself here. It'd be nice to be alone later. Yes, it would. Me and Lexi were together for a couple of days before Blake found out. To prevent an early end of my life, courtesy of Blake Winberry, I married his sister before he headed out of town. That wasn't much of a courtship. Yeah, but I was always fond of Lexi. His father would always invite me over for dinner whenever we were in Columbia. It was almost impossible for me to keep my eyes off of her. I'm sure Blake noticed. But after what happened at the hospital, I was fairly certain Lexi was fond of me also. But... But what? But that was the last I ever saw of Lexi Winberry Lightfoot. But understand, this is a very headstrong woman. She's very independent. After me and Blake headed out, so did she. Joined up. So she became a field nurse? No. Joined the Army of the Confederacy as a soldier. She wasn't the only woman who did that. So she changed her name, and you don't know what became of her. I don't. Sally, get away from there. They'll see you. I don't know what we're going to do. Yankees plunder, steal, and burn houses. Don't forget violate. Most likely, they'll violate us both. Young lady, you should not know such things. Oh, go back to bed, Mama. I don't dare let them find me in bed. You know what? I'm sure some of them are gentlemen. They're Yankees. 
No Yankees or gentlemen. We'll find the nicer ones. Offices. We'll make them nice and cozy in our home. Yankees in my house? That's right, Mama. And you'll be sweet as pie. Being a refugee must have been devastating for you. Can you tell me what it was like? How did you travel? By foot. All the horses had either gone to our cavalry or the Yankees. We walked in groups of whoever was heading in the same direction. We were called trains, refugee trains. It was a horrid joke to me. I would have given anything to be able to travel by train. Sometimes there were groups of 15 or 20, and sometimes two to 300. Mm -hmm. And soldiers traveled with you? Security was completely inadequate. I traveled in small groups most of the time. If we were lucky, we had one soldier with us. It was no deterrent for the Yankees, but at least the security kept the bandits at bay. Was there any kind of shelter on these refugee trains? Heavens no. It was the ground and a pillow, if you were lucky enough to have a pillow. How did you survive this ordeal? In truth, the memory of my wedding and my hopes that I would be reunited with Blake. something, Matt? Maybe. Horse coming fast. I don't like the looks of this. That's just a scout. We're in trouble. Matt, take Rawlings. Go find Jimmy. We'll split up. Meet back at camp as best we can. What's your little group doing here, Reb? We had permission to visit a friend. Who's that? That's my business. We'll find out.
You got friends in high places. General Wheeler. Where is old fighting Joe? Beats the hell out of me. Don't lie, you just been to see him. He's on this side of the river, ain't he? How many men? A whole damn division. 5,000, I guess. Oh, damn division, my ass. Just shoot him, let's get out of here. Nah, even if he's lying, he's still a keeper. Kilpatrick will want him. I'd love to end your sorry life right now. Just one wrong move. So you're Captain Winbury of the 5th South Carolina Cavalry, huh? Yes, sir. Well, then you can tell me where Butler's division is. I don't know. I left him two days ago. Where was he then? In camp. How many effectives does Butler have? Quite a few, I guess. Damn you, be specific! I never counted. <laughs> Must be more than three. Reds can't count any further than that. What was in the dispatch? The envelope was sealed. I wasn't privy. Ah, oh, bullshit. You're on Butler's staff and you know plenty. I'm only a line officer. A gorilla? Do you know what we do to gorillas, Reb? Who are you calling a gorilla? No! Jay, don't let him do it! Tell us! Not here. I won't have you uh, scaring Ms. Dubois. General, I'm an officer in the Provisional Army of the Confederate States of America. I am in full uniform, and you're holding my commission in your hands. You're obligated to treat me as a prisoner of war. <laughs> Bullshit! I could have you killed for the atrocities you people have committed in this war. But Captain Winberry and I, we, we used to be neighbors. Neighbors? His mother and mine were best friends. We went to the same church. He is exactly who he says he is. I really would detest you for having him killed. Well, I'll tell you what, Reb. You cooperate, and I'll be lenient. What do you want? Where's Wheeler, and how many men does he have? His division's north of here. His whole division? As far as I know. Where? North! You can't miss him. Just ride north. Think on it. For the lady's sake, I'll give you a couple hours. Hampton says two for one. What? Hampton says two for one, starting with the officers. Trellis, get him out of my sight till it's time to kill him. Sorry, Ms. Dubois, we can't coddle our enemies. Something wrong, Lieutenant? Matt, where's Blake? We had to split up. I expected him to be here. Need you to show me where you split up. Okay, but there's an ass load of Federals coming up on us out there. What else have I missed? Fayetteville's about to fall. How long? Hard to tell, it could be tomorrow. Winberry's wife is there. Hope she knows to get the hell out of there. I need to find JC. Where'd you get those rings, J.C.? Family heirlooms, Lieutenant. Where'd you really get them? Had to cut the boy's finger off to get this one. Well, I got a job for you. About damn time, where are we going? It's a solo deal. Need you to help me track down Lexi. Who? My wife. I just like hearing you saying that's funny as hell. I think she went and joined up. Hmm. 
We need to find her before she gets herself in a lot of trouble. What's in it for me? My eternal gratitude. What else? I always make it worth your while. And remember, she's my lady. I'm gonna head north. We'll meet up in two or three days just east of Camden. How you enjoying our hospitality, Captain? Stinks. <laughs> we found Wheeler, without your help. I'm sure you mean he found you. I hope he gave you a real ass whipping too. Not deuce likely. You hungry? Yes. Good. Maybe we'll be generous and throw you some scraps in the morning. Mrs. Angs, have you seen anyone in back near the barn? No, why? Well, it appears that someone has stolen my horse and my buggy. When did you last see it? This morning. Do you know him? Lieutenant Lightfoot. Why are you here instead? Is he all right? Mrs. Winberry, I don't know where your husband is. I knew Fayette was about to fall. Thought I should warn you. Oh no, the Yankees? Yes, ma'am. You can stay if you want. There's gonna be fighting. I think you should leave. When? Not long. I'm sorry, Lieutenant. Thank you for stopping by to tell me. How are Dr. and Mrs. Winberry? They're still in Columbia, living in the hospital. The house burned down. Seems like half of Columbia burned down. By the way, we're in-laws now. I beg your pardon? How do you mean? Lexi and I are married. Well, it certainly is a surprise and rather sudden. Yes, it was. I believe you and Blake have started a trend. How is she, Lexi? She's, uh... She's fine. Don't you ever get frightened wearing that blue? It's cadet blue. Confederates know the difference. And it makes the Yankees pause for just a second. And that's all I need. I gotta get going, ma'am. Lieutenant, if you see Blake, will you tell him that I miss him terribly? I will. If you'll tell him that I'm headed towards Raleigh. Here, take this. Careful, it's loaded. But you'll need it. I'll get another one off a dead Yankee. It's not much at long distance, but up close it'll cut a man in half. Ladies? Any more at home like him? One. Traveling once again The enemy at my back Drip to my soul, bare flesh against the cold. Trail of heartaches, trail of many tears, and hope such a traitorous friend. Fire trail. Listen up. There's a house about a mile from here. Kilpatrick was staying till last night. We'd infiltrate the Yanks, find out if him know where Winberry is. Well, I ain't wearing blue. I ain't gonna do it. All right, Matt. I'll infiltrate. You boys just keep the Yanks busy. That's fine with me. No wonder we're losing this damn war. Got some bacon, Red. You must be starving by now. Here you go. Wait a minute. What am I doing? This is much too good for trash like you. See, trouble is, Captain, 
I hold the power of life and death over you. And I have no reason to let you live. Sir, when do I get some relief? I've been with this rep for two days. What the hell is that all about? Trellis? Give up on you, Captain. Gave up too soon. <laughs> General Johnson's gathering an army. Make a stand north of here. I guess I missed my chance to see Judith. I saw her yesterday in Fayetteville. How is she? Tolerable. Probably heading the same direction you are. I miss her. She said the same thing about you. Ain't that sweet. Excuse me. Is this your place? Yes. I was wondering if you might have a room you could rent me for the night. I can pay for it. Have you had any experience in the hospitals? Yes, quite a bit in Atlanta, some in Columbia. Excuse my manners, I'm Dr. Thompson. Judith Winberry, Mrs. Judith Winberry. You got a husband in the fight? Calvary. My nurses have run off. I guess they're scared of the Yankees. You're not. Somebody's got to patch him up. They're going to need me. There's a room for you at the top of the stairs. I won't charge you as long as you can help with the wounded. Well, that's a very kind offer. I accept. Most of the gray coats that could be moved have already been moved. How'd you find me? You got your ways, I got mine. What'd you find out about Lexi? The day she disappeared, they had six sign-ups. They all went to the same company. Where'd they place them? Just south of us. The units are trying to muster up, but they're scattered. Any casualties from that unit? I haven't had a chance to dig in that deep yet. I'm gonna head out at first light. Far too dangerous out here. Federals everywhere. You Doc Thompson? I am. I understand you've been working on our boys as well as your own. That's right. On the next few days, there's gonna be a lot more blue coats around here. Not all of them are gonna be friendly. What do you suggest I do about them? Don't turn away any federal wounded. That'll come back to you in a bad way. Good day.
This boy's arm's gonna come off, and I have nothing for pain, nothing at all. Don't let him take my arm off. Please, please don't let him take my arm. down. He'll die otherwise. Now help me. disposing of the limb before he sees it.
Who are we missing, Captain? Wind bearing that Caldwell boy. When did you see him last? It's been a while. Two hours, maybe. I'm over here. Bell, what the hell are you doing? How come you're not out there digging? Why don't you get out there and do some work? How can I dig without no shovel? Get one off the wagon. If I catch you throwing off on me one more time, I want to have you hanged. I hope you understand me. That nightmare was like a cannon. It lifted me out of the bed and threw me out the door. There was no way on earth I was going to stay put at that point. My purpose was to find Blake. I knew that he needed me. It didn't matter where I had to go or who I had to go through. This was my purpose. Morning. Lieutenant, been looking for somebody. Wonder if you could help me out.
what you have to understand is that we have very few resources available to us for this kind of thing. If he were wearing blue, it may be different, but as it is, my hands are tied. I'm sorry. Hey, um, you're going to keep looking for him. You're going to need a provost pass. I'll get you a provost pass. If you find him and he's alive, bring him back to me. I'll, I'll try to help you out. this. Better. Better now you're trying. I'm going to get help. Good for you. Smith, get Reynolds. Need some help over here. You're awake. I'm 
fixed you some supper. Do you think you can eat anything? <sighs> Captain Tucker let me bring you here. He was nice for a Yankee. Judith. The whole time I was laying in the woods, the only thing I could think about was you. Nobody but you. I love you, June. Heard that Dr. Patch Wanberry up right. He's gonna pull through. Yeah, he's with the Yankees now. Lord help him. Has anyone seen Hunter? I want him to hear what I have to say to you all. JC, have you seen Hunter? Nah, but I found out something about him he don't want me to know. See, when this thing's all over, it's gonna have a bounty on his head. He's your partner, boy. And you turn him over? I sure would like to get that bounty. Two of a kind. So what you got to tell us, Major? Miss Whitfield, may I ask you a question? Who else are you interviewing as part of your story? I have an appointment with Hunter Lightfoot. Hunter Lightfoot? Really? Yes, he's back in Columbia. He's started some sort of tavern. He was always such a character. He vanished right after the war. There was a price on his head. He broke his young wife's heart. That was Lexi, my sister-in-law. She waited years for Hunter. I thought she was expecting a letter of some kind, but she finally confided in me she'd been hoping he would send for her. She would have gone to him, wherever he was. That invitation never came. Is she still in Columbia? Yes. She finally settled down. Would you allow me to contact her? If she approves, certainly. You know, Mr. Lightfoot, I was in Charleston a few days ago. I had a conversation with Judith Winberry, of all people. She knew where Lexi was, and I found her. She wants to see you. Okay. I'll bring her in. And she's here? She's here. Lexi, Lake sister, right? Yeah, Lake sister. So how are you doing? I'm well. I remarried and I have a son. How are you? I'm good. Opened up this restaurant. It's doing okay. So are you married? Yeah, you know me. I do know you. It is good to see you. Take care. You too. Hunter, why didn't you look for me? Well, I did. I came back to Columbia, but you don't understand. Everybody was after me. I was a wanted man. Even JC was trying to kill me. I took you with me. Look, Lexi, that was no life for you. We'd been on the run constantly. I, I knew if you stayed here, you'd find a good man and settle down. And that's the life you deserve, not the one I could have given you. Thank you. At least you found your husband at the end of the war. Miss Whitfield, after the war, Blake and I had eight wonderful years together. The bullet that tore through him missed his heart by a fraction of an inch, but there was so much damage. 
He left us two years ago. He should never have even survived that first night, the night that he was wounded. I tell myself that he made it through so that we could be together again. He stayed alive for me, and I found him for us. We loved each other. Did you want to go and do that? All I wanted was a good time. I won't ever leave you again. 